Thanks for the introduction. So I'm Romain Poussier from the Université Catholique de Louvain, and I will introduce you a new key enumeration algorithm. So for the outline, I will first do a brief introduction about side channel attacks. I will explain what is key enumeration and rank estimation and why it is important. Then I will uh, introduce in particular one rank estimation algorithm, which I need to then introduce our key enumeration algorithm, and I will show the experimental result, and then I will conclude. Okay, first of all, um, so there is this picture that shows the global idea of how it works side channel attacks. Well, actually, you've seen it at the previous talk, but you know, in Belgium we like recycling. So. Um, so on the bottom left, we can see the beginning of uh, an AES execution. So you have a, a plain text value X, which is called with a secret S, and it goes through an S box and give a value Z. And I also assume that as an attacker, I also have access to the power consumption, for example, of the device which is running the, the AES. And in particular, I have this uh, sample leakage L, which corresponds to the manipulation of this value Z. What I will do is I will try to modelize how this value Z leak in practice. Uh, for all the different secret value S, and then when I want to go to the attack phase, I will do a comparison between my model and my actual leakage, and I will maybe, if my model is good enough, get some information on my secret. Okay, now let's say I want to attack an uh, entire key, which is here shown in red. Um, in the case of a uh, block cipher, what I will usually, what I will usually have is that uh, this key will be divided in small independent parts, which I call subkey. Here I have n such of these. And what I will do is I will do a divide and conquer attack. I will do n independent attack on each one of these subkeys. So let's first focus on the left. Uh, I want to attack key zero. Here I assume an 8-bit subkey, so I have on, uh, in total 256 possible values. And after my attack, for this, all these values, I will get a probability that um, this value is the actual one. So in the end, what I have is I have n different lists, each one containing 256 different uh, probabilities. And what do I do with that? Um, I have mainly three cases. Let's first look on the left. It's where I have enough side channel information, which means that my actual key has the biggest probabilities in all the different subkeys. In that case, well, actually, I'm done. I just have to concatenate all the best subkeys and I directly recover the full key. Uh, I have the case in the middle where I don't have enough side channel information, which means that it at least one of these lists, the actual subkey is not ranked first, but I do have enough computational power to output all the keys from the most probable one to the least probable one up to the good one. And that's what we call key enumeration. And the number of keys that I output before the actual one is called the rank of the key. And basically, as an attacker, that's what I want to do. And the last case, it's where I don't have enough side channel information and I don't have enough computational power as well. For example, if the key rank is 2 to the 100, there is no way I can compute up to this. But what I can do, if I know the real key, as an evaluator, I can estimate the rank of this key. And this is very important because if I'm only stuck with the direct recovery case, it's kind of a binary situation. Like, either I succeed, either I don't, but I don't know how close I was to succeed. For example, uh, if the key rank is 2 to the 10, actually, uh, direct recovery will, say, will tell, OK, I didn't succeed, but 2 to the 10, it's nothing. So actually, the attack worked. On the other side, uh, if the key rank is 2 to the 100, I can say, OK, I'm secure against this attack. OK, um, now about rank estimation. So let's give a quick look on the literature. We have many algorithms since a few years. And mainly, uh, we have three ones from Glowers, Bernstein, and Martin, which are very, very efficient in less, uh, in few seconds, they give a, a very good estimate of the rank within one bit of accuracy. And here I will describe uh, the algorithm of Glowers et al. because we build our key enumeration on their rank estimation algorithm. So mainly, it works in three steps. First, it builds histogram from the such an attack results that I've shown before, which are the end list of 256 probabilities. Then it will combine this histogram and count the rank. Okay, first step, uh, building histograms. Let's look at the left picture. Um, this is an histogram that I've built from all my 256 probabilities for the subkey zero. So basically, on the y-axis, we have the number of keys that have uh, log probabilities given by the x-axis. Um, I will explain afterwards, uh, afterwards why I do need log probability. And since I'm in the case of rank estimation, I'm an evaluator, I know the real key, so I know it, what is the probability of the real key. So I know in which bin it will fall. This is given by the red curve here. And basically, if I want to know the rank of this third key, I just have to count how many uh, elements I have in the green zone. That is, all the bin on the right 
of the actual key. And so I can do this for all my subkey. Okay. And what do I want to do next? It's to combine all these histograms. Here, this is a combination of uh, the two histograms that I've shown earlier. So these two histograms had, uh, were for 8-bit subkeys, so it was only uh, 256 elements. Now, if I combine all the possible combination of subkeys, I have this histogram, which contains 2 to the 16 elements. And again, I'm an evaluator, so I know uh, what are the probability of the two real keys. So I know where the combination probability falls, which is again given by the rate curve. And again, if I want to know the rank according to this combination, I just count how many elements I have in the green zone. But in practice, how do I do this uh, combination is uh, I will use histogram convolution. And actually, this is why I need log probabilities, because convolution does exactly what I want, but it, it, uh, it works with additive property. And of course, my probabilities have a multiplicative property. So I have to go to the log domain to get uh, an additive relationship. So we have uh, our n basic histogram from H0 to Hn minus 1. When, what I do is I just iteratively do a histogram convolution until, uh, until I get my final histogram H. And here is an example of such an histogram. So actually, it was a, a real one from an actual attack on EAS. It's a blue curve. And uh, so if we count the number of elements in all bin, we have uh, 2 to the 100, 128. Uh, different elements, and okay, again, since I'm an evaluator, I know the probabilities of all my 16 um, subkeys, so I know in which bin it falls, so this is given again by the red curve, but actually what I didn't mention is I've done some errors in the building phase. When I first built the initial histograms, actually I lose information about my real probability. It's like I, round, it's like I was rounding the, the real probability, so I lose some information, but I can, I can bound this last, Actually, if I want to get the, the higher bound, I have to go to uh, n divided by two bins on the right and to get the lower bound n divided by two bins on the left, where n is uh, the number of convolutions that I've done. Okay, so now we'll present the key numerational algorithm. So first again, let's uh, have a quick look on the literature. I will first talk about the um, algorithm of Vera Charvignon et al., which has been presented in 2012. This key enumeration algorithm was optimal, which means it was 100% sure to output the key from the most probable one to the least probable one with no errors. But it has two drawbacks. The first one is that it's very memory intensive, meaning that, for example, if I want to enumerate more than two to the 36 key, it was consuming gigabytes and gigabytes of RAM. So it quickly become infeasible. And also it's completely sequential, which means I cannot uh, enumerate more than one key at a time. Then we have um, many other key enumeration algorithms recently. Most specifically, I will focus on the one from Martin et al. on the bottom left. This algorithm is suboptimal, which means I'm not totally sure to enumerate the key in the right order, but I can compute bounds on, the, on this last. It's memory efficient, which means I don't have any more memory problems to, uh, to enumerate, and it's fully parallelable. And then uh, we have our key enumeration algorithm on the middle right, called uh, histogram enumeration, is also suboptimal. And what is very nice is that we can compute very easily the bounds. These are the exact same bounds that I've shown for the rank estimation, like when I count uh, bin on the left and bin on the right. It's also memory efficient. I have no more memory problem as well. And I can very easily parallelize this. OK, for the steps. First step, the first two steps are actually the exact same steps as for the rank estimation. I build histogram from my list of probabilities, I and I combine them with histogram composition. Same, I need to do what I call a bound search, which basically is a, I have to find where to begin my enumeration and where to, where to end it. It can be seen as counting the rank. And then I do the actual enumeration with a technique of backtracking. I will explain it with a simple example of uh, two subkeys. With uh, of four bit each, so I first on the top compute the first phase, which is I build histogram, so I have 16 elements because I have four bit subkeys, and I have the second phase, which is uh, combination, so I do the convolution between these two histogram, and I get uh, H01 on the bottom. Then I have to do the bound search phase. Let's say, for example, I want to enumerate all the keys which are ranked between 10 and 100. I have my histogram H01 on the on the right, and what I do. Um, I have to count from the end of the histogram on the right up to the left how many keys do I have in the bins. For example, in the last, uh, you have the number on top. 
So in the last bin, I have only one element. It's not 10. I continue on the left. In the bin before, I have five elements. One plus five equals six. I'm not up to 10 yet, so I continue. Then I get the bin with 13 elements. 13 plus six equals 19. OK, I got my first bin. Then I continue up to 100. This gives me all this green zone. And I know that in these bins, all my rounded ranks are the keys between 10 and 100. But actually, again, I did some errors when building my histograms, and which was uh, the number of convolution divided by two. Here, I've done only one convolution because I only two sub keys, so I have to add one bit on the left and on the right if I want to do the, the real ranks with no errors. Okay, now, um, the backtracking phase, which is the actual enumeration. I first do an example with only two sub keys. So again, I have my H01 on the top. And let's say I want to enumerate all the keys which, uh, which are in the bin 7. What I do is I go back to H0 and H1, and I try to find all the possible combination of non-empty bins which are equal to 7. For example, uh, if I take the two green, uh, two green bins for H0 and H1, I have non-empty bin for 2, non-empty bin for 5, 5 plus 2 equals 7. OK, it's a com combination that works. And I do this for all the possible bins. But uh, in practice, I have more than two sub keys. So how do I do? I will do uh, some kind of recurrence. In this example, I have four different sub keys. So on the, on the right, I've done the first phase, which is the histogram building. So I got my H0, H1, H2, H3. Then I've done the convolution phase that we see on the left. So I first take H0, H1, I got H0, 1. Then I took H2, I got H0, 2. And I took H3, and I get H0, 3. And let's say, uh, I hope you see well, because it's very small. But if you want to look at the black bin in H0, 3, it's the bin 16. And let's say I want to enumerate this bin. What I do is I look into H3, and I see, oh, my bin 5 is not empty. And oh, lucky, my bin 11 in H02 is unlucky as well. 11 plus 5 equals 16. That's a combination that works. So I take all the keys that are in the bin 5 or H3, and I store them. Then I'm left with H02 and the bin 11. So now I take H2. I see, for example, I have the bin 4, which is not empty. And H01, I have the bin 7, which is not empty. 4 plus 7 equals 11. OK, another combination that match. I take all the key in the, in the bin 4 of H2. That's my possible candidate for K2. And I continue. And then I'm left with the, uh, the example that I've shown earlier with only two sub keys. And here, for example, I take uh, the bin 5 for H1 and bin 0 for H2. Uh, 5 plus 2 equals 7. OK, I got my key candidates for K0 and K1. And this gives me something like this, which we call a key factorization. In this example, I had two possible uh, values for key 3, 3 for key 2, 2 for key 1, and 4 for key 0. And so it gives me four lists of respectively 2, 3, 2, and 4 elements. And these actually correspond to uh, 2 times 3 times 2 times 4 complete key candidates, which are shown here on the bottom. So it takes all the possible combination of these four uh, lists. Um, this is what we call the defactorized list. And of course, uh, in terms of memory needs, it's uh, more efficient to store the factorized list than the defactorized one. OK, that's what the idea of how the algorithm is working. Now we'll, I will show some experimental results, not all of them. First, let's have a look on the accuracy, which is linked to the error bound. What I didn't mention, on the construction phase of the histogram, there, of course, one, par one parameter that you do need is a how many bins do I use to compute my histograms? And this has a significant impact on how accurate I will be. So this graph on the y-coordinate are representing the number of keys I need uh, to enumerate to guarantee an enumeration up to an exact key rank given by the x-coordinate. So for example, let's focus on the top left figure for 256 bins. We have the black curve, which is the curve x equals y. Basically, it's just the optimal enumeration, like for example, with the algorithm of Berosh or Vinoidal. In blue, I have uh, my algori uh, our algorithm uh, enumeration um, sampled over 1,000 experiments. And this is the average uh, bound that, I, that we got. In red, we have the extremum, that is the maximum bound we got, and in, uh, in green, the, the minimum one. First of all, what we can see is that the more bins I take, the more accurate, accurate I am. But also, what we can see is that when the key rank is small, like 0, 10, I have a huge gap between the optimality and uh, my bounds. But when the key rank is high, this gap is getting lower and lower. Then we can also look at the speed. 
So in these graphs, I show the time in seconds it takes in the y axis to enumerate up to the x axis. Again, in black, we have the enumeration optimal algorithm of Verito. In uh, red, we have our uh, enumeration algorithm sampled over 1,000 experiments, and the blue crosses are just a sample of these 1,000 experiments. And this time, what we can see is that the more bin I get, the slower I am. And by the way, uh, if you look at the graph on the bottom, or anyone actually, I cannot use the algorithm of error at all uh, more than uh, at this point because uh, it takes too much memory. So I'm left with a question. Should I take a lot of bins to maximize the accuracy, or should I take a small number of bins to maximize the speed? And actually, it depends. So when you want to go to the key testing phase, like what a real attacker have to do, you will have to uh, take the keys that are outputted by the key enumeration algorithm and to test them on, a, on his uh, block cipher to see if they are good or not. And actually, it will be a trade-off between your precision and your testing capabilities. Let's consider uh, two different cases. First of all, on the left, uh, I assume that I'm a local attacker. Let's, see, uh, let's say I'm uh, in my garage and uh, I want to attack uh, the ID electronic card of my neighbor for some reason, and I only have my laptop, so I'm limited in uh, computing power. But on the right, we assume that we have a big organization, we have a huge computing power infrastructure. Okay, first on the left. What I will do is I will uh, use my laptop to do both key enumeration and key testing. And what will actually happen is that I will have to do the key testing on the fly, which means I will have to defactorize the list on the fly and test all these uh, complete keys. And um, if I take a small number of bins, I will output too many keys at a time. I will output more keys than I can test them, so I will lose some accuracy for nothing. So in that case, I'm better maximizing the accuracy. However, in the case of a big company infrastructure, I can imagine like uh, I have a, my, uh, a software computer for the key enumeration part, and I have like many a a hardware AES for the key testing phase in parallel. And in that case, there is two things that I want to, uh, to do. Since I have a separate enumeration and separate key testing, I want to, first of all, to minimize the bandwidth needed for the communication between my software and my hardware. And also, I want to use as, most, as many uh, hardware AS as I can. So I, actually, I want to take a low number of bins. I will lose accuracy, but I want to test as many keys as I can in parallel. And uh, moreover, as we saw in the accuracy results, when the key rank is very high, I have a smaller gap between the optimality and the, and the, the bound. OK, so as a conclusion, we have uh, developed yet another key enumeration algorithm with some cool feature. We have very simple bounds. We have this key factorization, but actually we're not the only ones. The algorithm of Martin et al. also can do this. We have a very easy way to parallelize it, but I didn't have time to talk about it, so you should read the paper for more information about that. And we believe that it's pretty much simple to understand. It's just histogram, convolution, and a backtracking. You can find an open source code written in C++ of this algorithm, along with the key, uh, rank estimation algorithm, which can be downloaded on this link. And uh, if you want to try it, you should read the paper, because uh, there are actually more parameters that are not described here. Thank you for your attention.